Right. Let's uh, let's pray and we'll get started. Okay. Let's pray. Father, we we thank you for this day. We thank you for this new day. We thank you for this uh, God new academic year. And um, yes, Lord, even as we come before you, we commit ourselves to you, Lord. Uh, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the work of your spirit. Lord, we thank you for uh, the wisdom that's in your word, the riches um, that are in your word, O oh God. And even as we uh, come before you, we humble ourselves, Lord, and we ask, O oh God, that you would uh, speak to us, that you would teach us. Um, Father God, we pray that you would... Uh, Lord, that uh, that we would come in alignment with your word, with the revelation that's um, uh, of truth that's in your word, O oh God. Um, and I pray, Father God, that each one of us, that we would uh, apply uh, your word and live it out um, so that our choices, God, our imaginations, our speech, our behavior, everything, Father God, is in line with your word. And help us to live a, a word-centered, a Christ-centered life and a spirit-led spirit life. Um, we thank you, Master. And I just pray for each and every person here uh, attending this um, uh, session today. Um, after a long time, God, I just pray that um, you, you would take care of all their needs according to your riches and glory. And uh, even as we've uh, uh, seen the um, request here, okay, uh, um, for, we pray for Sidkeno pray for his exam. We pray that he will do well. Um, pray for, Lord, your shalom, your peace to engulf his heart and mind. Uh, and also, God, I pray that you would greatly enhance his uh, ability to focus and not be anxious and write the exam well. We commit him into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Okay, so... Um, so this uh, this semester, uh, we are going to be looking at um, uh, this whole topic of uh, Christian marriage and family. Okay, so uh, uh, very interesting, very very uh, um, you know practical, and uh, um, I would say you know a, a, a subject that's very uh, of great importance today. Okay, because it's uh, completely. Um, uh, it's it's under a lot of attack. The whole uh, area of marriage and family, um, you know, seems to be under a, a lot of attack with varying, you know, varying opinions, varying um, thoughts, varying um, uh, varying ideas about how it should be, you know, dictated by popular culture, right? But uh, uh, but we go back to the Word of God. We back to the original design. We back to the original intent that uh, you know god uh, has for us we look into the word and we begin to look at all the aspects of uh, you know what a marriage is about um what family is about and we're going to look into that okay so um so that is um, something very interesting so we're going to spend the next two hours doing that okay so um so i just want to ask you guys you know um uh, like how many of you are married um uh, I know uh, John Paul is. Uh, can you just put your hands up? Uh, okay, Subhashesh is married. Uh, okay, Lubega, Isaac. Okay, so we have uh, three, four, four, right? Four people who are married, uh, including me. It's five. Okay, so um, for the, so this course, when we look at this course, we see that it's um, it's a preparation. Right for those of you who are single, um, you know it's 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 a it's a good preparation for those those of uh, those of you who are single um, to to get grounded in what marriage is about, right? Uh, to get grounded in okay, what is the role of the husband? What is the role of the wife? Um, what is compatibility all about? What is God's um, intent for marriage? Um, you know, and uh, you know this is a great time of learning, and also it's a great time of unlearning. Because a lot of things uh, we have been fed by either it's popular opinion, either by tradition or culture, um, or you know when you say popular culture, what comes in through you know the social media feeds and what comes in through our you know uh, avenues of entertainment programs and so on. So um, so it's a great um, you know I would say that it, it's something that really. Uh, you know, uh, as as much as we learn, we are also it's it's a time for unlearning. Okay, so uh, it's going to affect our 
you know our attitudes our motives our, our perspectives right so uh, so it, it's definitely going to be um, that uh, for those who are preparing it's 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 a, it's a great time of equipping okay, maybe you're saying like, you know 3 years down the line 4 years down the line is is what i'm you know i'm thinking of when it comes to marriage no problem but uh, this can be a good foundation and a great time of uh, learning and, and equipping as well right um for those of us who are already married um it 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 is again going to be a time of uh, learning and unlearning and a time of enriching you know uh, maybe uh, some of these things maybe you know we went through uh, as prepare you know when we were preparing for marriage so it'll be a reiteration of the truth uh, of what we have already what we already know uh, but also it will be uh, you know some of these things uh, maybe we didn't really apply it maybe we uh, uh, maybe we, we it was it's completely new for us right uh, maybe you know uh, what happens is traditionally and culturally this is what we this is how we do things right this is how we treat uh, our spouse but um, uh, when we look into the word and when we look into what the word of god has to say you know that can be um, you know the truth of that uh, can really be life changing like transform uh, you know uh, and uh, transforming so for those of us who are married it's going to be you know that uh, time of uh, enriching uh, uh, our marriages maybe you know marriages are struggling you know there could be uh, challenges in marriage uh, there could be conflicts in marriage right and uh, yeah, there will always be conflicts in marriage uh, but how to you know handle that how to resolve those conflicts how to walk through or work out some of these challenges so it's going to be um, uh, you know a time of looking at that okay um so what i'd like to just uh, you know uh, tell us before we get into it is uh, about the course uh, we we'd like you to read those on uh, guidelines which are there you know if you go to the class work section there are uh, there's one uh, pdf which is uploaded in the student guidelines um, section so i'd like uh, we'd like all of you to go through it please right so you read through it um go through it and then there's another pdf which is uploaded which is uh, uh, the manual uh, the course notes that we are going to be uh, following so you could download that on your phone or your laptop so you can access it and you can follow through uh, what we are doing um uh, the, when we when we uh, when we go through our classes go through our lessons okay so um well you could open it up you can follow through uh, let me try and um, put a powerpoint uh, share a powerpoint with you just one second right Okay, I think it's been a while since I did that. So, <laughs> excuse me, guys. Right. Okay. Okay. Can you okay, see that coming up on your screen? Um, okay. As you can see, it's a very old picture. Um, that's me standing there. <laughs> it's one of the weddings that uh, we. Uh, officiated okay okay so this, these are some things that we're going to be looking at okay if you if you want to go through an overview uh, uh we're going to be looking at understanding what marriage is okay so biblical understanding of it uh we're going to be looking at um, you know how to prepare for one's marriage for those who are already married well it's going to be some course corrections maybe um then we're going to be looking at making the choice Right. we're going to be looking at things like compatibility and so on uh for those of us who are already married well uh, it is uh, uh well, we can't do much here but uh, maybe it, it it's it's something like uh, uh you know reiteration of what we could maybe teach others right um okay then understanding roles husband and wife okay understanding the role of the husband the role of the wife and then we're going to be looking at attitudes and temperament um and this is a big one big topic you know communication in marriage 
okay so what is uh, communication all about in marriage how important is communication what happens when communication breaks down in marriage uh, and so on okay then managing your home then there is sex and sexuality uh, becoming a team resolving conflicts overcoming life's challenges uh, pressing forward by releasing the past uh, then we're going to be looking at boundaries in marriage. Uh, then there is an introductory, uh, a basic session on parenting and uh, one more session on nurturing children. Then uh, we're going to look at the family altar, intercession, uh, how the family is part of the church and the kingdom. And uh, then uh, we're going to look at, um, you know, when children become your friends, in the sense, uh, you know, over the, uh, when you reach a season in life, when children are grown up and uh, they are no more, you know, kids, but they've grown up, they are adults and how they become your friends and, and enjoying the rest of the journey, right? So it's, you see, it's a very um, a comprehensive course right we are starting from you know understanding marriage and going all the way um, you know uh, parenting etc so um, so it's it's going to be interesting as well okay um, okay so let's look at um, you know this whole thing of uh, marriage when we see um, we see that god is really um, <laughs> i see a comment isaac okay so god is really the you know um, designer of marriage you can you can follow through uh, on your notes um as well so god is really the under uh, you know the the one who is um, uh, designed marriage so it's not you know a social construct or a social institution um or, or you know something like that but we see that god is the one uh, who has designed it Okay, the, so the designer of a marriage is God himself. Now, that's, that puts a lot of things into perspective. Meaning, you know, if God is the designer of marriage, then he has a very good reason for designing. He has a very good reason for, you know, if you want to use the word, creating this whole concept of marriage and family. Okay, so without God, in the picture uh, or without drawing from him uh, a marriage is going to be very very challenging right so that's something that we need to understand so without god in the picture without god in the mix right um, marriages uh, will uh, i mean just going through marriage is going to be very very difficult so now, you know, as a believer also, you know, we might say, okay, um, you know, we, we've seen this, right? We've seen this in people, okay. Um, okay, I'm a, I'm a good believer and I, you know, I pray, I worship, I read the word, etc. But when it comes to marriage, when it comes to, you know, um, we, much like business, you know, we, we want to go the way of the world. We want to go by popular uh, opinion. We want to see, okay, this is what, you know, this is what they do. This is how they they live, and this is this is what they think about their husbands, and this is what they think about their wives. So this is how they treat their husband. This is how they treat their wives. So I'm going to do the same thing, right? Because this is how it's done. This is how my father treated my mother, or this is how my mother treated my father. You know, this is how, you know, I, I'm going to do that. It doesn't work that way, because we see that God Himself is a designer of marriage. So if He is not there in the picture. If we are not receiving from him right, the blueprint for marriage, if you're not receiving from the designer the blueprint for marriage, the design for marriage, then it's going to be very challenging. Okay, let's look at um, let's look at this scripture. Um, let me just put that up. Okay, this is from the um, Message version, uh, the Message uh, Bible. Okay, Genesis chapter two, eighteen to twenty-five. Right. So um, what does it say? It says, um, let me just read through. Okay. God said, it's not good for man to be alone. I'll make him a helper, a companion. So God formed from the dirt of the ground, all the animals of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to man to see what he would name them. Whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man named the cattle, named the birds of the air, named the wild animals. Uh, but he didn't find a suitable companion. Um, God put the man, this is verse 21, God put the man into a deep sleep. Um, just a minute. 
Yeah. So God put the man into a deep sleep, and as he slept, he removed one of his ribs and replaced it with the flesh. God then used the rib that he had taken from man to make the woman, okay, and uh, presented her to the man. The man uh, said, finally, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, name her woman, for she was made from man. Therefore, a man leaves his father and mother and embraces his wife. They become one flesh. The two of them, the man and his wife, were naked, but they felt no shame. Okay, So we see that, um, well, God looked all around and he... Uh, um, and then he, see, he, he says this, you know, it is not good for man to be alone. So I'll make him a helper, a companion suitable for him. And he creates the woman. Okay. So we see that, um, you know, if we look at all creation, right? So God says it's, it's all good. It's all perfect. And, uh, well, he created Adam. It's all good. But it's what is not good is for man to be alone. So he, he creates this or designs this whole concept of um, marriage. Right? We see that he creates a woman and brings and he says, okay, I'll find him a helper and a companion. So what would, you know, happen if man was all alone? Like if he was in that stage, right? So we see that, um, well, um, um, you see that you know uh, he could be um, he could be lonely, right? Because the Lord says that uh, it is not good for him to be alone. So he could be lonely. Um, he could be isolated, right, from from others. Uh, he could be uh, he could end up being very uh, selfish or self centered. Okay, so all these possibilities are there, and um, so the Lord wants wanted to eliminate this, eliminate all this. And he says, okay, uh, whatever is causing this not good, I want to make it good, right? And uh, he brings along Eve. Okay, so um, so we see that God is, in fact, um, solemnizing this, this marriage, right? Um, so we, we see this verse that for this reason, verse 24, a man leaves his father and mother and uh, embraces his wife. Okay, so when we look at, uh, uh, so that's what the Message Bible says. And if you look at the, um, you know, the, the New King James uh, version, so this is how it reads, um, verse um, 24, right? Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they, and they shall become one flesh. Okay, so it uses a strong word there, you know, leave and uh, be joined to his wife. And in fact, the old King James says, leave and cleave. Okay, uh, leave and cleave. So, um, and the word used there is a, is a strong word, which, uh, which really means, um, you know, uh, abandonment. Okay. Um, so it's a kind of a strong um, word that's used there. Uh, and the thing is um, that, no, marriage has within it this idea of there is a sense of leaving. There is a sense of uh, all other relationships taking a second place, right? So, like, we need to understand that, right? So, all other relationships take a second place, and this takes a higher priority. So the Lord is saying, for this reason, a man shall, you know, literally forsake or leave, and uh, he shall be joined to his wife. Which means that he's going to set aside these relationships. It's not that it's, they are cut away, but in a sense, it's it is leaving, it is abandoning because it come it it comes to a second place. This one takes priority over all other relationships, second only to a relationship with God. Okay, so that's that's something that we need to understand. Okay, so um, which means that um, well, we're we going to look at you know uh, how that happens and the practical aspect of it and what happens if you know if that priority is not set in place. 
okay um just, just wanted to you know share this that the lord of course he wants he he's the one who's, who created family he's the one who created marriage so definitely he wants us to honor our father and mother honor our parents right that is something just you know that's there the first commandment with a promise so that it will be well with you so you know so we're not doing away with that at all you know god is not saying okay just because you're married you don't have to honor your parents no you know that is very much there but in terms of priority of relationships you know, this is going to take precedence okay um uh, so we're going to see how it happens okay and how uh, when it does not happen what really uh, what is the outworking of that you know what happens right um if 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 it's not conforms to god's design okay um so uh, so god created god uh, designed marriage and he created someone who is going to be uh, you know physically intellectually uh, morally you know someone who's going to be suitable for for the man to be a companion right you see that word companion uh not a servant right to be a companion and a helper you know a help meet right it's mutual and we read the epistles ephesians especially right so so this is god's design um so someone who's going to be all this but also very different okay and um, and i think it's very important that we understand you know what are these differences not just physical difference but also emotional because god emotionally uh, and and so on because god designed us in in such a way so that we complement each other so that we'll be best suited for the role as husband and wife right so um, so that's how he created us so it's all wonderful right god's design is perfect god's design is wonderful okay so we're going to look at um, um another scripture Uh, let me just uh, share that okay let's uh, let's let's look at this definition probably if you see it in your screens it says marriage is a man and a woman leaving all other earthly relationships embracing meaning cleaving pursuing each other and becoming one becoming one person before god okay um let me just read that again marriage is a man and a woman a male a female right leaving all other earthly relationships because he says you know there is a leaving that happens and a pursuing a coming together and embracing leaving right so uh, leaving all other earthly relationships embracing each other and becoming one person before god okay so god uh, designed this to be to be intimate god designed it to be um, you know in 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 this way right okay so we see that um, Now, Matthew 19 verses 3 and 6 now some pharisees came and they asked this question to the lord uh, they wanted to trap him so what did they ask you know they said they asked does our law allow a man to divorce his wife for whatever reason he wishes okay. and uh, listen to what lord how the lord answers it he says haven't you read the scriptures that that says that in the beginning the creator made people male and female okay and god said for this reason so he's the lord is quoting from genesis 2 like for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and unite with his wife and the two will become one so he's like he's reaffirming you know approving and uh, he's in you know he's in line with what the father the the initial design of marriage and and he's just reaffirming that right and then verse 6 he says so so they are no longer two but one no hum no human being must separate then what god has joined together okay so um, i'm i'm sure you might have questions you know what about you know uh, in what area or in what circumstances under what circumstances is you know divorce uh, permissible is divorce permissible etc you know we're going to i just want you to hold on to those questions okay we're going to be uh, we're going to be addressing those issues we're going to be looking at that also because the lord also talks about you know divorce um, in another place so we're going to be looking at that okay so just hold on to those questions make a note of it and we'll come back to it okay um so the thing is this you know many um maybe if if we just uh, asked each person right um 
you know each of you would have certain thoughts about marriage right uh, based on maybe what you've seen and observed um if you're a married person based on your own experience right uh, you might have certain thoughts about marriage in the sense okay you know whether it's good whether it's bad whether it's ugly you know um, you know single people sometimes they might, might be very starry eyed wow it'll be wonderful like a fairy tale you know uh, the prince will come and take the princess on the horse and then they'll ride into the sunset you know kind of a, a thing picture and uh, yeah so we might have all these kinds of uh, images and uh, perspectives about marriage okay so um and you know if somebody's gone through a bad marriage or somebody's um, seen you know marriage struggles at close quarters well they they might come to a place of saying being very cynical you know marriage is is not for me or it's it's a place of great pain and struggle and so uh, i don't want anything to do with marriage right um you could come to such conclusions also but let's look at what god says right and then we'll come to you know our own conclusions based on that right i think that's only fair right we look at scripture we see okay this is what god's idea is and these are what god's thoughts are when it comes to marriage so you know whatever has let's not go by you know whatever our assumptions are or experience is uh, let's look at what god thinks about it okay so let's look at it um well so the first thing that we see is uh, uh because it was designed by god who is good and he has the best in store for us right we can say very boldly state very boldly that marriage is a good thing let me just put it on the chat okay that uh, marriage is a okay so marriage is a good thing right um the reason is this that it was designed by god whatever god designs is good why did he design it he designed it so that it will be for our good so it can be a blessing for us and it can be a blessing to people it can be a blessing to society right so so we can say that yes it is a good thing okay now how can we make it a good thing how can we continue and journey in it as a good thing well those are things that we need to work out right but primarily okay the foundation the premise is that marriage is a good thing okay so just think about that just allow that to sink in okay marriage is a good thing uh, let's look at a couple of verses okay um Uh, say um, Proverbs eighteen and verse twenty-two. Okay, Proverbs eighteen, and uh, I mean these are there in the notes, but uh, you know, I'm just sharing this. Proverbs eighteen, verse twenty-two. Okay, what does it say? It says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Okay, and obtains favor from the Lord. Okay, I don't know if you've seen that verse before, but you know we we actually look at it during our marriage preparation course and. and uh, and that really clarifies a lot of things right for us that uh, scripture is very clear it says he who finds a wife uh, it's not a bad thing it's not something that's um, you know it's a you know something that's uh, going to cause a lot of trouble or pain or whatever it's a good thing and and look at the second part of it it says that and uh, obtains favor from the lord okay so so god's favor god's approval is there okay so it's a good thing right so um so this is something that we see the first thing that we see is that marriage is a good thing because it it is a, it is a it was designed by a god by god who is who himself is good okay so what is the second thing when we kind of comes to uh understanding marriage um so uh, i'm sorry just before we go into that so so it's it's important that you know i'm just talking to married people here that um since marriage is a good thing and it since it is designed by god you know if there is any other thought in our in our minds about marriage you know you might say hey you don't know my husband or you don't know my wife you know, how can marriage be a good thing right um but the thing is it's designed by god 
okay so forget all that other things you know forget all uh, the negativity or the jokes surrounding marriage you know there are so many jokes about marriage and about uh, uh, in-laws and you know um, maybe at another time we could we could you know look at all those jokes but um, but the thing is this you know in our mind we can come to that conclusion that marriage is a good thing and the only reason being that uh, god created and who is a good god who has the best intentions for us okay right so um so we we see this uh, uh, verse hebrews 13 and verse 4 um which is uh, you know the next thing that we are going to look at so it's a uh, it's something that is good so it is something that needs to be honored esteemed highly okay so first of all i make that change or i come aligned to that you know to that truth that it's a good thing and secondly if it is good then it's something that needs to be honored that needs to be esteemed highly because god sees it as a good thing god desires that to be you know among his people so it's something to be esteemed highly it's something to be honored okay um hebrews 13 and verse 4 the message version again says that honor marriage and guard the sacredness of sexual intimacy between wife and husband god draw, draws a firm line against casual and illicit sex okay so we see that uh, it is something that needs to be honored okay what is it it's an you know uh, in your notes you would see an institution you know something that is established uh, an established custom or an established uh, sorry established practice is called an institution right an established custom and an established practice so uh, marriage is something that needs to be honored as an established practice and an established custom okay and uh, there is the sacredness of marriage and there is this boundary in marriage and and god uh, in fact he draws a firm line right um so we need to do that as well okay so the third thing we see when it comes to marriage from a biblical perspective is that a marriage is a covenant okay um so i'm sure you know all of us uh, we would have attended a marriage you know some uh, wedding and and maybe you you've even maybe if you're a pastor you've solemnized a wedding and and uh, and you know you see you exchange certain things right you're saying some things you're exchanging a ring you're exchanging a, maybe some other token of uh, you know uh, affirmation you're saying okay i i'm serious about this and over and above all we are also exchanging some vows exchanging some promises right we're saying you know uh, i promise to do this right i promise to do this and i promise to take you uh, as my you know as my husband or as my wife and then you know the typical uh, wow of marriage wow says you know in sickness and in health you know uh, in all these various seasons i i promise i make it a covenant i vow to do this right? so what is a vow uh, uh, what is a covenant it is an it's an agreement like right? it's a promise it's a vow and uh, it's something that you know that god takes seriously because we are doing it in his presence and we are saying with god being my witness i make this solemn vow right um okay so let's look at this uh, verse um okay and uh, in malachi you know god is uh, he he has this um, he's angry and uh, you know this is what he says why you know he's angry with his people uh, malachi chapter 2 verse 13 it says and here second offense you fill the place of worship with your whining and sniveling because you don't get what you want from god and do you know why simple because god was there as a witness when you spoke your marriage vows to your young bride and now you've broken those vows broken the faith bond with your vowed companion your covenant wife okay um so so we see that uh, uh it is a solemn which means it's uh, something that is reverent Uh, reverential it's a solemn covenant and it is uh, something that is holy and something that is uh, 
something that is made in the presence of God. Okay, so we might say, okay, these are just words. Well, these are words, but these are words that are solemn. These are words of promise, and it is uh, it is a covenant, you know, in the presence of a holy God. Okay, um, so it needs to be honored. It needs to be taken seriously. Now, you know what what normally happens is like uh, you know at the wedding, it's it is the custom. Right at some point, you'll have these vows, and of course, people write their own vows, you know, nowadays, and and say, you know, I promise to be this, I promise to be that, and so on, and uh, and everybody's happy, you know, everybody's uh, oh, people are wiping away tears of joy, and uh, everybody's smiling, the photographs are being taken, the videos are taken, and all that, and everybody's happy, you know, it's just an environment of great joy and celebration. But we need to understand that these vows are made so that whatever season we go through, right, uh, whether it's high, whether it's low, whether there is, uh, you know, challenging season, these vows hold good. This covenant holds good, right? Because uh, God being who he is, when he makes a covenant with his people, you know, he's faithful. He's faithful to his word, he, to watch over his word, to perform it. And so we must uh, we must be you know as people who imitate God as people who walk uh, like Jesus, right? So um, so it's something for all seasons, right? So the thing is, uh, you know, is it uh, well, is it difficult? Is it challenging? Yeah, of course it is. Nobody said it's going to be easy, right? You know, when you make a vow and you're saying you know in sickness and in health, you know. Uh, at, at, at different seasons, you know, uh, in good times and in bad. And he's saying, you know, I honor you with my body. And a typical marriage, you know, a wedding vow would have that, right? Um, I honor you with my body and all my material possessions, uh, you know, they are yours and, and mine and it's uh, and all that. But then we see that, you know, very quickly sometimes, you know, these vows are broken. You know, we forget. It's as if it was conditional. Right, uh, you know, I, I choose to honor you. I choose. I take you as my. As long as you do this, this, this. Well, you never said that, right? So, uh, so it's a you know, it's a it's a solemn covenant. It's something that needs to be honored. Uh, it's a vow. Okay, God takes it seriously. Okay, next one. Very interesting. Okay, uh, is everyone finding it interesting? Yeah. Okay. How many of you think it's challenging? Okay. Is this yes for interesting or challenging? Or for both? Okay. For both. <laughs> okay. Jeffina says both. Okay. So let's look at um, uh, let's look at the next one. Okay. So the next one is um, you know, when you look at the word, you see that um, hey, marriage is between one woman and one man. Okay. Um, it's between one woman and one man, right? So, uh, again, going back to Genesis chapter two and uh, you know verse twenty-four, uh, we're going to be going, you know, referring to that over and over again. Uh, verse twenty-four says, "Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh." And um, they were both naked, the, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. So, you know, nakedness, physically nakedness, and you know, they're being vulnerable to each other. Basically, you know, there's nothing hidden from each other. Um, you know, figuratively, figuratively speaking, you know, it could refer to that as well. But, but anyway, the thing is that, uh, you know, they were open, they were vulnerable with each other, and this kind of a relationship is for one man and one woman only, right? So that's something that we need to understand. Is not this kind of a vulnerable, precious. Um, open, transparent relationship is not for all, right? It's not for all. I can have this only with my spouse. Okay, so that's another thing that we need to understand about marriage. So, you know, sometimes people make the mistake of saying, okay, physically I'm, you know, close physically i'm 
you know, made myself vulnerable or you know, have this relationship with my wife or my husband. But emotionally, I'm close to someone else. It doesn't work that way, right? Well, you might say, you know, this person doesn't understand, you know, but this person, the other person does. No, this kind of a relationship of physical vulnerability, emotional openness, being transparent is for the husband and wife, is for one woman specifically, you know, one woman and one man only. So the problem happens when it is not so. Right. Other things, other challenges, issues, you know, uh, cr creep in when it is not so. Okay, so this is what we see. So, um, yeah. So let let's talk about that. You know, um, so it's it's one woman and one man. So it is what we call as an inner circle. You know, if you can, if you can, you know, picture that, a husband and wife, and then you know, there's a circle around them. So in that circle, uh, well, of course, God is there. They cannot be an, any other human being, right? If there's a third human being, uh, third person in that, in that circle, then it is guaranteed that the marriage will experience, experience stress. It is guaranteed. First of all, there is no room. But when you make room and uh, when you make yourself flexible to accommodate another person, in that circle, this kind of relationship I'm talking about, right? Um, what uh, what what the Word of God is describing this kind of a relationship. Okay, um, so so you, you 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 know I think we need to understand it right. It's not like okay, you know some people might take it to an extreme, saying okay, uh, you know I'm not going to fellowship with any other person. You know uh, we are going to be very close. To, you know, husband, wife, family, you know, no, no, no other friends, you know, just acquaintances and keeping everybody at arm's length. You know, that's not it. This kind of a relationship between one man and one woman, you know, it's, it's between one man and one woman only. And uh, that circle is for the husband and wife only. And they cannot be a third person in that circle. Okay. So uh, when somebody moves into that kind of a, uh, a circle, then there is, uh, then there is stress. You know, if there is, let's say, in what way, you know, you might, you might ask, in what way can a third person be there? Yeah, you know, let's say if it's an if it's a case of adultery, right? If it's an extra marital affair or extra marital relationship, then there is a third person there, right? Physical intimacy is compromised. Emotional closeness is compromised, right? And uh, uh, I forget the reference where it says that, uh, you know, you destroy your soul. I think in Second Peter, you destroy your soul. Right? So in that way, it happens. Or maybe saying, okay, um, I'm married, you know, I'm, I'm close to my wife and all that. But I have this one other person who is, who is really emotionally closer than my, than my spouse. Or it could be, you know, I'm still emotionally dependent, attached, um, you know, to, well, the elders in my family or, you know, father, mother, you know, more than my spouse. Okay. There also the marriage will experience stress. Okay. So, so you can say, okay, I've lived with my parents, you know, maybe 20 years, 25 years, whatever, you know, uh, so I had all these wonderful, uh, you know, memories and all that. And, you know, how can you expect me to become close or intimate with another person whom I've known, well, a few months, a few years, you know, that is why this, this thing of coming together or becoming one is, is a journey. It's a journey. It's a process. It's a journey, right? But as long as we are committed, you know, as we made our vows on our wedding day, as long as we are committed to same to make that journey, then you know, there's this process of making one, uh, of being, of uh, being one, will uh, you know, uh, will be something that is um, uh, that will be strong, that will that will end in uh, you know a greater intimacy and greater closeness and so on. Okay, but this is something uh, that we need to understand. Okay, 
So, um, so if you notice, we also looked at the gender, right? Marriage is between one woman and one man. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Okay, even in the vows, also, um, you know, in some of these, um, uh, you know, some of these uh, wedding order of service, uh, the the pastor, you know, we 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 asked that question. Like, I don't know if uh, you know, we're all from different church backgrounds, right? So the pastor asked the question: you know, Who gives this woman to be married to this man? You know, sometimes I wonder, you know, what it's so. You know, why can't we put a name there? You know, it's like. Uh, who gives Arthi to be married to Jay Kumar? No, Arthi is my wife. Why can't we make it personal? Right? It's, it sounds so, you know, formal and so distant. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? And then you re I realized, you know, somebody pointed that out to me and said, "Hey, you know, this is the truth. This is how God designed it. The marriage is between the woman and the man." So bringing out the importance of the gender, this is how God created it. So in today's, you know, in today's culture, in today's, um, you know, society, you see that there's uh, all kinds of marriages, right? Uh, marriages between a man and a woman. I'm sorry, a man and a woman, which is, of course, normal. But, um, you know, there's homosexuality, there's uh, you know, lesbianism. And, uh, and recently, I, I just saw, you know, there's a, there's a person who married herself. I don't know if you noticed it was it was in social media okay who actually married herself uh, i don't know how how's that's working out but you know you have all these kinds of things happening in society so it's important for us to uh, understand that it's between the man and the woman okay okay so we'll we'll take a break right now i think we it's 9:50 we'll take a break we'll come back at uh, 10 a.m. okay god bless mm -hmm.